Hello everyone, this is Marcel and welcome to my channel. Today's topic is almost entirely revolving around the way that women speak about men. And this is generally when other men aren't around to listen to them. Now I have always believed that how a person speaks about someone behind their back is truly how they feel about them, or at least closer for the most part. Then when that person is actually around, they change their tone because they don't want to lose face. Or, of course, it affects the interactions they have with that specific person. So, behind their back, they're more honest. About the target, that is. With their friends, with their colleagues. Now, we've all heard the classic, you know, I want to get a good man so I can get income. Or, I want to have a good man to take care of me. Or, I want to make a baby, I don't care who it's with. You know, we've all heard women say that. Not that long ago, I was slithering my way through a mall and bumped into some random women and uh, they started talking to me out of the blue. One of them was fairly attractive, and I believe she initiated the conversation. The other one was just kind of tailing along and looked a bit like a hippopotamus. The conversation initially started out product-related, but for some reason shifted into talk about boyfriends, which is in where the heavy-set one promptly stated that she needed a boyfriend because somebody had to buy her lots of stuff. The prettier ones scolded her for it, and then they went about their business. Considering they were friends, they probably had a similar mindset, but I found it interesting that the prettier one would prevent it from being stated, and I'm almost wondering if it didn't have something to do with me. Considering the store that we were in was fairly expensive and I was wandering alone, I was probably inadvertently making myself an easy mark. In any sense, I think we can all agree that women will speak one way to men that they're interested in sexually, or romantically, or for any purposes, and another way to men that they're not interested in, as well as speaking differently amongst their friends. That's not much of a stretch. Men do exactly the same thing, you know, consider a guy's night out. Observations like that have caused me to want to pay better attention to the things that people say when they think that no one's listening to them, but when I'm already in the room, like in class, for example. And I've come to the realization that women speak in the same manner about men or their boyfriends, husbands, etc., that they do about their handbags and their pets and their accessories. So, in a sense, in the eyes of women at least, men are accessories. Now, maybe that's obvious to some, but let's take a minute to let that the gravity of that concept sink in. Take, for example, a purse, you know, a handbag. A lot of women would like their bags to seem reasonably sized, you know, appropriate, but then also have deep pockets, just like their men. This current generation of women would not hesitate, at least in most cases, to spend a fortune on a bag like a Gucci or a Coach, which, as far as quality is concerned, may not be any different than something they got from Walmart, but they're getting it for the status, they're getting it for the style, the social commentary they're likely to get on their beautiful new bag, in the same way that a woman would rather have a flashy, important-feeling boyfriend above a blue pill man that would be very dedicated to her, say, for example, if he just has a boring job or a less interesting lifestyle. The priority function of the bag is more how it influences her social interactions, the same as a boyfriend, though the utility is, of course, a close second. The average woman, as they gather more crap, will continually pile it in the bag fuller and fuller and fuller until it's exploding at the seams and would rather get a new bag entirely even despite the value of the original bag, than to have to remove some of their lifestyle, some of their choices out of it in order to allow it to keep functioning. Same as their men, if you're starting to see the trend here. Women will not bend on the things that they want or the things that they want to do. It's easier for them to exchange up to a boyfriend that's going to allow them to do what they want or accommodate their desires than it would be to say, well, yeah, I guess I really don't need to move into that bigger house right now, or I don't have to go to several concerts a week. I can give up that so that we can have a functioning relationship, said no woman ever. If a bag breaks or is damaged, it's automatically assumed that it's going to be replaced as opposed to being repaired. That's pretty straightforward as well. On the side of that, you know, what woman really wants a broken boyfriend when there's a hundred other men in line just waiting to take the chance to be with her. At least that's her perception, of course, time never does stop ticking. 
Then there's the interesting interactions that come from the concept of sharing or trading off boyfriends. It's like a woman may pick up and use a discarded purse if it's valuable and suits her needs, but not if she actually knew the person who used it previously. Like she wouldn't pick up her friend's purse after they discarded it at least not as comfortably socially, setting aside, of course, the type of woman who would literally steal it because there are women who will do that in regards to men, especially sharing such accessories or stealing, using, picking up, things like that come with social repercussions. She could not easily keep the friend whom's boyfriend she picked up. There's almost a twisted sense of ownership that lingers for a while, if not indefinitely which is fascinating because it's usually men who get accused of that. Nonetheless, even to me personally, once I've dated particular women, I've been locked off from their entire group of friends, and it has almost made me regret having picked her and not one of her friends to date in the first place. Whole sections of my old hometown would become locked off as far as romance was concerned. Because of one bad choice, one bad date, it really didn't matter. The hive mind hard at work, I suppose. The point I'm getting to here is that when I sit back in these classrooms and I work office, you know, whatever it is I'm doing, and I hear the chattering in the background like a flock of little birds chirping, and I hear things like, oh, are you dating so-and-so? Yeah, I was dating him, but I tried in him, and I'm going out with this one over here. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I mean, we do all this fun stuff together, but blah, 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 blah. And I see no difference between that conversation, the tone of it, the sound of it, the things that they prioritize from it, and their bags and their shoes and their pets. Now, why do I say pets? Well, when a woman has a pet, it feels vastly different to me than when a man has a pet. A guy will have a pet and it's like a companion, you know, someone they work with, somebody they do things with. I guess I could also say something. The point is that for the average guy, the purpose of owning that pet is for the joy and interaction with the pet itself. Whereas when you see women walking around with the frickin' little dog in their bag, is there any doubt that that's just another accessory, like a watch or a necklace? Sure, they're getting something of an emotional boost from it. It's a creature that's desperately needing their attention and for some reason is locked in their goddamn purse and could arguably be a replacement for a child that they'll probably soon be having at some point. Come to think of it, I don't think I've seen as many women with kids also having the little purse pooches, you know, whatever you want to call it, the little animals they carry around with them, it seems to die off. Not literally, just the, the concept of carrying them right around the time they have kids. And I'm guessing that's not a coincidence, but nonetheless, I mean, kids ultimately become something of an extension of the woman herself. I've spoken about that in previous videos, talking about single mothers and stuff. I'll put a link to it up there. I guess to sort of wrap up my thoughts on this, I've dated a number of women, looking back on it, where I've been something of a conversation piece. When they got bored about discussing other things, they would talk about me. Granted, of course, I heard that far more often involving their boyfriends, not when they're actually dating me. Nonetheless, I would say that women compare the wealth and usefulness of their boyfriends more often than men compare the attractiveness of their girlfriends. These hard-working guys become something of useful idiots that they can trade off, exchange, throw out. I don't think I could ever see myself again being something of a lapdog to a woman. Aside from the disrespect in that concept alone, I wouldn't like the job security behind it anyway. I doubt that purse dogs uh, have great life expectancy. Besides, men are better than that. Men deserve better. So what do you guys think? Am I onto something or is this all old news? Have any of you ever heard or witnessed some crazy things women have said about their men in the background when they think nobody's listening? Hopefully somewhere out there right now there's some helpless blue pill guy trapped in a woman's purse and his foot accidentally kicks her phone and this video starts playing and he's awakened. What do you think? Could we save someone? If you're out there listening now, quick, claw at the zipper. It's your only chance. Start pushing out mail so we know where to find you. <laughs> Sorry guys, I couldn't resist. Anyway, 
a couple of things that I'm doing now with my channel. I've started making full-length music, made my first song. I'll put a link to it right here if you want to check it out. I'm still not at the point where I'm doing vocals for it. I might have to hire somebody because it, yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. Hey, music doesn't always got to have vocals, right? Also, speaking of that second channel, I would really like to be able to post videos on it and monetize them to where I could start seeing which videos get demonetized and for what reasons. That would be really interesting. I don't see anybody doing that with their channels or their spare channels even, even though they have the capabilities. YouTube has blocked us from repo publishing identical videos probably for that reason so that you can't learn from their algorithms or their uh, AI. What do the new rules say? A thousand subscribers before you can monetize it? I don't even care if I make any money off the channel. I just want to dig into what the new algorithms are doing. YouTube has a lot of secrets and we need to crack them. Of course, that's just me thinking they should run a transparent and somewhat honest business, but you know, I'm old school like that. On that topic, I have come up with some very interesting information, uh, some bullshit that YouTube is doing with its viewers, its creators, and so forth, things that I haven't heard anywhere else that's new, and that's going to be my next topic. My next video is going to be up on it. So stay tuned for that. I'll have it up in a few days. You might be seriously surprised in what you hear, or maybe not. I guess we'll see. Until next time, this has been Marcel. If you want to hear more content like this, like, share, subscribe. See you next time.